All right, so this is a project I've been um, wanting to do for a while. Um, I actually got most of it built before I started uh, thinking about putting it on on uh, YouTube or doing a, any documentation on it. But I wanted to have a, um, a nicer workbench for my table saw that uh, had uh, the ability so that my fence could be accurately positioned um, and have repeatability. So if I wanted to have a uh, position set and then go to a new position and then go back to that position again I'm not having to sit there and try and figure out you know or adjust it on a on a fence so I built this cabinet um, I used uh, a bunch of select 2x4s uh, from one of the local um, hardware stores uh, the select 2x4s are really nice because they don't uh, have a lot of knots they don't have any wane um, there's no there's hardly any warpage to them so after you plane them uh, plant them down then they uh, they come out really nice to make a nice uh, nice cabinet for the shop um, using some uh, laminated uh, plywood that's uh, 11 ply marine grade plywood uh, makes for a nice uh, countertop uh, for it and then as far as the the fence is concerned um, I wanted to have something that had uh, linear rails on it I didn't want to use anything like a, a standard Beesmeyer fence or anything like that I wanted to accurately position both the front and the back of the of the fence. Uh, so, what I've got is I've got these rails that I made um, out of some aluminum angle. Uh, the angle is um, three quarter by three quarter by eighth inch thick, and then I screwed it to a piece of plywood that I cut a, a forty five on both the top and the bottom of the. Uh, of the plywood and then screwed that down in, in uh, alternating positions. And then I made um, the actual bearing carriage uh, out of just some scrap aluminum extrusion that I had that was earmarked for a, a 3D printer I was gonna build. But uh, this uh, became top priority. So I went ahead and cut it down and used it to, to kind of build like a, a temporary carriage just to make sure that this was gonna work, just kind of like proof of concept and you know make sure everything's gonna be okay. So I've got these, um, these two bearings on the top, you know, two bearings on the top, two bearings on the bottom, and the front and the back of the fence to help kind of pinch the angle. And I've got that both on the back side of the, of the saw and on the front side of the saw. And then I have a quick release using a, uh, a knurled knob nut right here. I've got one of these on the, the front side as well. So I just take that off. So if I want to take this fence off, then I can go ahead and take this completely off. It just rolls right off. So if you want to do bigger stuff, you can. Kind of gives you a, a look of what the uh, the carriage I made is. So that uh, works fairly well. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. It um, it does the job for right now until I can make something that's going to be a little bit more. Um, professional looking or uh, you know easier to build type of thing so the reason I uh, built my saw this way I have um, I have a lot of depth in here on the on the saw table itself because I wanted to be able to use my crosscut fence that I built which also is going to have a CNC aspect to it as well um, but using a job saw uh, you have the the problem with if, if, when you pull your crosscut sled back, once you get halfway on the on the sled to the front of the table, it's going to want to fall off, and you're going to lose your accuracy and lose your your positioning. You could take the blade will uh, hit into the into your zero cut um, zero clearance cut. So I wanted to extend this front out a little bit more. It gives me a little bit more area, so I can pull the fence all the way back for clearance, and it's still going to be nice and and sturdy on the uh, on the top of the table. So. I've got my crosscut slaw sled. So I've got my crosscut sled here. So you can see that I can come all the way back, way out of the way of the blade, and I'm still not back far enough where this thing is gonna really fall off the edge of the table. Uh, I still got some good support here and uh, gives me a nice, good, clean uh, good clean cut when I'm using the crosscut sled. Now, the sled that, uh, the uh, aspect that I have of this that's gonna be CNC, 
is going to be a fence that's going to be bolted to it. So this is the fence that I'm making. Again, this is just a temporary, just a proof of concept situation um, using linear rails from a 3D printer um, and some extrusion. So the way that this is going to this is going to work, and I'll, I'll do another video of this uh, a little bit later on to give a, a little bit better um, depth of, of concept of what I'm doing here. But uh, this is just bolt up to the back of, or to the front actually, of, of any crosscut sledge you're going to put on, on, your, um, on your table. And there's going to be a uh, stepper motor that will be attached to here. And uh, so this gets bolted down. I have my my block here the the clearance on this is set so that that the blades highest point it still will not come into contact with any of this um, so this gives me a, a block here that I can go ahead I'm all, there'll be a, a cover that goes across here so that the face of this will be at the same level as a piece of plywood down here so that's going to give you a, a zero cl zero clearance uh, gap and then there will be a stop that will be mounted right here and the whole reason i wanted to do this is i got to thinking about you know uh cutting dados or finger joints uh into the ends of boards and how dangerous it can be unless you have something like a cross cut sledge set up but when you have that you're still having to move it over if you're going to do a finger joint using a standard blade uh, instead of a dado blade then you have to set up a, a system where you have a notch that does your step over. Uh, and the problem I was seeing with that is if you have a bore, if you have it set up for a specific width of a uh, finger joint and you have a board that's an odd size, then your finger joints don't come, don't come out even. They're even all the way down the board except for the very last finger joint. I wanted to make something that was gonna do all the calculations for you and then automatically adjust the width of all of your fingers so that it's spread evenly across the board. So this is gonna be controlled with a um, microcontroller um, that'll have all the logic in it, that'll do all the calculations and everything. So what you'll do is you'll enter in your board width and the type of finger joint that you're gonna use, whether it's gonna be a male-female finger joint or it's, you're gonna have the equal number of fingers on each board. So once that's uh, entered in, you calculate out the, the number of uh, fingers and the board width, and then it'll automatically calculate exactly how much it has to cut on each cut. You'll have settings you'll be able to go into. You can specify the width of your blade, the width of your tooth, uh, if you wanna have any clearance left over, and uh, that will all be calculated in and automatically space it out evenly. So once that's done, there's gonna be a a trigger switch on the on the uh, side of the board here I'm not sure if it's gonna be on the right side or the left side but it'll be set up so that when you're ready to go you'll go ahead and you'll do your first cut and then when you come back it'll trigger a switch that will automatically advance this to the next position and then when you do your next cut it'll advance it to the next position and so on and so forth so this will make it more of an automated system to where all you're having to do is just push the board back and forth and it's automatically advancing for doing all of your cuts. So that was the, the main reason why I wanted to do this. Um, I haven't seen anything out there like it. Uh, there's more expensive equipment that you can get that has CNC capabilities, but you're looking at you know $30,000 for a table saw that has, um, that's all automated but I haven't seen anything for the hobbyist or for small shops. So that's why I wanted to kind of make this, is to kind of get started, share what I've uh, discovered and making it with other people so that you can, you know, anybody else can make it themselves. So that's the crosscut sled. As far as making the table saw, um, I had to do some, some modifications to the actual saw itself. Um, the saw, because of the, the way that the controls to raise and lower the blade and set the angle on the blade, 
because of how that was all done, that was all right here in the front. This is a, a rigid table saw. Um, I really like this saw. It's actually a, a pretty good saw. And um, so I had to extend everything out in the front, which uh, took a little bit of time, a little bit of uh, engineering uh, to get everything to move forward so that the clamping mechanism to lock the angle in uh, function properly um, to get the, the blade height. Eventually what I'm gonna do though is that is all gonna go away from manual controls and that'll all be controlled with the stepper motors and um, into the microcontroller. So what you'll do is you'll enter in the exact height that you wanna go and the blade will actually move to that exact height. Um, if you want a, a specific angle, you'll enter the angle and it'll actually move to the, precisely that angle. Uh, the CNC control um, equipment is much more precise in, in uh, repeatability. And uh, I know that there's, there's people out there that say that like a Biesmeyer fence is, is extremely accurate and you can put systems on there to make it to where you can do fine increment um, movements with it. Uh, but having something that is controlled by a computer that you just dial it in and it automatically moves is, is something that interests me a lot that I want to go ahead and add to a lot, a lot more of my equipment. So that's the system that I'm making. Um, this has, uh, it has wheels on it that'll be uh, lowered uh, with a uh, cam lock. So you push the cam lock down and these wheels on the ends will lower down so that you can move it around if you need to. And then everything is gonna be completely enclosed using the same type of plywood. This side right here, is gonna have a router built into it. So this will become my router table. And then the back side of my fence will actually be the fence for my router. And it'll have the split, the split fence on it to be able to adjust for the different size bits that you're gonna be using. And then in the microcontroller that controls where the fence position is, um, when you, you'll set what tool you're gonna to be using. So if you're gonna be using the table saw, then you will specify that in the controls and it will set the zero of the fence off of this side of the blade. So if you go to zero, it's gonna go right to zero. If you're going to be using the router instead, then when you select that in the controls, it will know where the position is at the center of the router and it will position the blade so that it is exactly at that position. And then you'll specify what diameter bit you're using and it'll offset accordingly. So that's the system that I'm making. I'm uh, looking at improving it a little bit more. Uh, I'm looking at maybe uh, doing this slide system uh, using MakerSlide. Um, I've been looking at that system for a while now and I like the, the, the fact that it has the carriage plate that would sit flat so that this would actually be able to just bolt down to the top of the carriage plate using you know knob knobbed uh, nuts like this uh, which would make it easier to remove it because then you wouldn't have to disconnect this fence from the actual lead screw and possibly lose your positioning of the lead screws so having that set up to where you can just go ahead and take it off the carriage would be a lot better so that's something that i'm looking at uh, doing is uh, making this with maker slide instead Anyhow, I'll give uh, more progress updates on this um, as I get things done. Um, building the UI for it, the user interface, uh, using an Android tablet. And I'm, I'm going to make an app that'll uh, interface with the microcontroller to be able to uh, control this. So as I uh, get progress done on that, I'll go ahead and do some small little videos showing the, the uh, functionality of the user interface. And um, as I get this finished, I'll put up some more videos. If uh, you have any questions or want to know how I did some of this stuff, just go ahead and message me and uh, I'll try